Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and thanks for joining us for a fantastic episode of the Western television show Stories of the Century, starring Jim Davis as railroad detective Matt Clark and Mary Castle as railroad detective Frankie Adams. And it's all brought to you free here on the internet by westernsontheweb.com. Come on by and see us on westernsontheweb.com for hundreds of free Western television shows and movies and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Westerns on the Web. And we're getting our Facebook page started, so come on by and visit us on Facebook, Westerns on the Web on Facebook. Now here comes Stories of the Century. We'll see you after the show. of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. One of the boldest and most defiant criminals of the Southwest was Black Jack Ketchum. By 1897, he and the members of his ruthless gang were wanted in both the United States and Mexico for train robbery, murder, assault, and extortion. Pass the word to the boys. Tell them to get out of this any way they can. Tell them to meet me at the Cullen Ranch, Clayton, New Mexico. All right, Black Jack. Where's the rest of the gang? Those that are left will be drifting in pretty soon. What do you mean left? Well, we had a kind of a run-in with the law. I don't think many of the boys got through. Which means you'll be needing new riders. How old are you, kid? Old enough to shoot a gun. I want to ride with you just like Pa did. You're not going to do it, Eddie. What are you doing here? Why don't you leave us alone? Well, I'm going to have to hide out here a few days, and Eddie said... Eddie's not riding with you. He's my son, and I'm not going to see him shot down and killed like his father was. All right, Mom, go on back in the house. You're only a boy. You hardly turned 18. And I don't hold with thieves and murderers. I figure your boy's old enough to make up his own mind. That's right. I'm tired of doing everything around by myself. Besides, there are plenty of things we need around here. Yeah, but not by breaking the law. What did the law ever do for Pa except getting him shot? All right, all right. That's enough woman talk. Now, you're outnumbered and you're overruled, ma'am. You get on back to the house. Not unless Eddie comes with me. Oh, Mom, please. I can have a word with you, Mrs. Cullen. I'm going You bring in some wood, Eddie. The rest of the boys. It's all that's left for gang, Black Jack. Come on, Miss Cullen. Too bad you weren't all killed off. Now, look, Mrs. Cullen, we're sorry you lost your husband, but we're going to have to hide out here for a few days. And I'd advise you not to go run into the law if you don't want something to happen to that boy of yours. Now go fix something to eat. The boys are hungry. Blackjack, you hear about the oil strike out in the big canyon? Yeah, I've been thinking about it. You know who made that strike and is going on us now? Huh? Andy Stone. Andy Stone? Yeah, he's president of the oil company. When did he get out of Leavenworth? About two years ago. 
He had a big gusher up there, and he's making money faster than we can steal it. Hey, Eddie. Come here, boy. Here, I'll take that into your mall. Look, get yourself a horse and throw on a saddle. I want you to run into the town of the post office with a letter for me. Sure, Blackjack. Anything you say. The Steve Cullen's kid? Yeah, tip off the old block. He wants to ride with us. Who's the letter going to? Andy Stone. An extortion note sent to an oil company executive named Andrew Stone brought my partner Frankie Adams and myself to Clayton, New Mexico. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. We were assigned to the case because the extortion threat was aimed at the oil tankers of the railroad we represented. Bill Joe, the local sheriff, arranged a meeting with the victim of the extortion note. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, oh, Matt. Glad to see you. We've been waiting for you. Frankie Adams, Matt Clark, Mr. Stone, president of the Inner City Oil Company. Glad to know you, Mr. Stone. How do you like that for a colossal gall? Either I pay $10,000 to this anonymous bandit, or he blows up your tank cars and my oil. There's two ways to look at a case like this, Mr. Stone. Either you pay up, or wait and see what happens. Mr. Clark, you probably know my past history. I was on the wrong side of the law once and served six years in the penitentiary to pay my debt to society. Since I've got out, I've worked hard and gone straight, and I've done well. Right now, I control some of the biggest oil fields in New Mexico. I'm not going to pay off to anybody. I've got the law on my side this time. Glad to see you take such a firm stand, Mr. Stone. That's exactly how we feel about it. In case that's not an idle threat, Matt, what kind of precautions do you intend to take? Well, this says that if Mr. Stone doesn't make the payoff by the 15th, they'll dynamite the oil cars. That gives us five days. From what point do you expect to ship your next run of oil, Mr. Stone? Along the Blue Canyon Spur. Can you give us help patrolling that section of track, Sheriff? You bet. Glad to meet you, Mr. Stone. We'll see you later. On the day after the threat, Frankie and one of Sheriff Joe's deputies and myself patrolled the country along the Blue Canyon Spur. be one of the sheriff's men. I'll check over by that trestle. You move on ahead and take a look at that tank car it's supposed to move out today. All right, Matt. Listen, Blackjack, why don't we wait? How do you know they're not going to pay off? I don't. Stone still has a couple of days to make up his mind. Blowing up that trestle on this oil car will show him we're not just bluffing. Come on, kid. You release the brake. I'll help you get her rolling. There. Checking the braces. I'm a railroad man. Yeah. I see your card. 
Not right now, mister. I'm leaving. Just a minute. All right, get over there. Come on. Now sit down. And you don't work for the railroad. Frankie caught turning loose the oil car was a local boy known to the sheriff. Up until now, the boy had no criminal record. You might as well tell us, Eddie. We'll find out sooner or later. It was a prank, I tell you. I set the car loose on a dare. Who was the man with you? I don't know. You called him Jack. Did I? I call lots of people Jack. That's why I have a talking to people. Like, hi, Jack. So long, Jack. You know. Well, he's certainly sticking to his story. Let's let him cool off for a while and try later. Come on. Well, Matt, what now? Did you tell me the boy's father was killed in a gunfight a few years ago? That's what I heard. I wasn't in this part of the state at the time. Why? Well, the name Cullen seems to strike a note, but I just can't place it. Does it mean anything to you, Frankie? Mm -mm. Do me a favor, Sheriff. Send wires to Tucson, Denver, and El Paso Police Departments, requesting a rundown on the name of Cullen. I'll get right on it. Good. I've got an idea, Frankie. Let's go have a talk with Mr. Stone. Bye. Free to go. How come? Writ. Insufficient evidence. I knew you couldn't hold me. Just sign this paper and you can go home to your mother. My oil goes up in smoke and what have you people been doing about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just a minute, Mr. Stone. Never mind the excuses, Sheriff. Where's that railroad detective? Well, presently out on business, sir. Well, when he comes back, you tell him I'm through with him and his railroad. Tell him from now on I'm shipping my oil by wagon. I made a deal with a freighting company who will move my product at half the price. Please, Mr. Stone. Well, it's no secret. Or at least it won't have to be by morning. My oil will be on the road by then. Good day, Sheriff. And don't forget to give Clark my message. I won't forget, Mr. Stone. Letting you go free, Eddie, is against my better judgment. It's out of my hands. My advice to you is go right straight home and stay there and keep out of further trouble. Thanks, Sheriff. Mr. Stone. Edwin Booth couldn't have done better. I don't know. Seems to me we're taking a lot of chances just to catch a gang of crooks. I've got a mind to pay the money and forget the whole fight. You can't do that now, Mr. Stone. We've gone to all the trouble to muster the finest band of fighting men in the territory. They're anxious to bring law and order to the Southwest for once and all. If they're willing to risk their lives, it seems to me you could risk a contract. Sure, sure, it's only money. But if that oil doesn't go through, I'll be wiped out. I can't tell you not to worry, Mr. Stone. We'll have enough fighting men driving those wagons to get us through a troop of cavalry if we had to. You win. Forget what I said. <laughs> 
Much obliged. Put your top men on the wagon, Sheriff. You and I'll follow with the posse and move in at the hottest spot. Let's go. What's the idea of leaving me there alone with the law? Uh, they let you off, didn't they? Yeah, I knew they didn't have nothing to hold you on. Yeah, because they kept my trap shut. I better go and say hello to Mom. Wait here. I heard Stone tell the sheriff something I think you ought to know. Mom. <laughs> Come on in the house, Eddie. I gotta know the truth. Well, Frankie, the all wagons are all loaded and ready to roll. Now, if that kid runs true to form... Here are the answers on the kid's dad. They all agreed that Cullen was a member of Black Jack Ketchum's gang. Matt, do you think Black Jack's been behind all this trouble? Frankly, I don't know why I didn't think of Black Jack before. Extortion is one of his pet schemes. Looks like we flushed out a big bird, huh? About as big as they come. If they snap at our bait, we'll have one of the leaders of the worst gangs in the Southwest. And if it is Black Jack, I'll guarantee you one thing, he'll try to stop those wagons. Let's go tell your men we meet at dawn. Daylight, where are you going? Me and Jack and the boys are going to round up some strays, Ma. I'm begging you, son. Don't go with him. Don't trust him. You singing that same old tune, Ma? Now, look, you're going to listen to me. For once, you're going to listen to me. Do you know how your father was killed? Do you really know? Sure, Black Jack told me all about it. The law gunned him down when he came out with his hands up. He didn't even have a chance to pray. The law shot him because he came out shooting because Ketchum sent him out to draw their fire so that Ketchum could get away. Why are you making up that silly story to turn me against Jack? No, it's the truth, I swear it. Your father made his way back here. He was dying. He told me how it happened. Just before he died, he told me. Why don't you tell me before now? Well, I didn't want you ever to know. There wasn't ever any need for you to know. Come on. Yeah, Jack. I'm coming. Don't worry, Mom. What's the matter, kid? The old lady playing on your heartstrings? That's right. Oil wagons went out on schedule with only the usual mounted guard riding point. The sheriff and I and some of the posse men rode flank, hidden only by the ridge. Other men flanked the wagons on the other side. with the kerosene? Yeah, the stuff scattered all along the canyon. Clatter the dust over the hill. I don't want one of those wagons left, understand? I should have you travel out of stone after this, Black Jack. OK, and he's off the brush. When you get through, we we'll be waiting for you in the rocks. All right, get going. Keep an eye on the kid. If he gets soft, I...
run for it. We'll cut over the hill. the dirty end and cover for you. Go on, Covert. Do it first. You got poor Covert. Go ahead, kid. You try it. Have you cover for me like you did for him? Like you did for my dad? You run out of here or I'll blow you out. Now move! If we go out, we... We go together. Head him off, Sheriff. All right, Black Jack. Hold it, you two, or I'll fire. Go ahead, kid. Shoot him! I'm gonna plug you, Black Jack, for what you did to my paw and what you tried to do to me. Oh! Get up there. What are you saving him for? Why didn't you let me kill him? Take it easy, kid. We're saving him for the hangman. I don't know why I ever got mixed up in this. Wish I didn't. Wish it was last year. Yeah, some kids have to learn it the hard way. It's too bad you had to be one of them. Come on. Come on! Don't worry, Mrs. Cullen. The doctor says his wound isn't serious. What'll they do to Eddie, Miss Adams? I don't know yet, Mrs. Collins. But he's... he's not really an outlaw. You must know that. He's only a boy. Barely 18. A little wild, maybe, but... not really an outlaw. He was caught with the outlaws, Mrs. Cullen. Yeah, but he tried to help them. The detective told me that himself. Please, Mr. Clark. You told me that yourself. Can't anything be done? Well, I... I'm sorry, Miss. No. Ketchum, was this the first time Eddie worked a job with you? What do you want to know for? Because I know what jails are. 
If that boy goes to jail, he'll be bitter the rest of his life. Well, that boy is the least of my worries. Let him defend himself. On April the 26th, 1901, in Clayton, Black Jack Ketchum, Will Culver, and the rest of the gang were sentenced to hang for the crime of attacking a railroad, a death penalty in New Mexico. Look, the kid had nothing to do with it. You remember that, won't you? Ketchum, faced with the gallows, had a last-minute change of heart and cleared Eddie Cullen. The boy was released to the custody of his mother until he was 21. So ended a man who, believing that might makes right, finished in an unmarked grave. enjoyed this episode of Stories of the Century, starring Jim Davis and Mary Castle, and hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com and see hundreds of free television shows and western movies, and there's interviews with some of your favorite western stars. Come on by and see us, www.westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. Have a great day.